In this episode, we take a look at a beautiful pair of decks, including one with some holographic innovations from renowned designer Giovanni Moroni's Third Way Industries. Plus, we announce the winner of the Silk Decks giveaway. Keep it right here. Author Malcolm Gladwell may be known to some of you, but for the benefit of those who don't know who he is, he's a journalist and writer most famous for his books, The Tipping Point and my personal favorite, Blink. In fact, I wholeheartedly recommend both to anyone who's even got a passing interest in nonfiction. Anyway, in Blink, there's a chapter dedicated to the successful allied efforts to decrypt German messages during the Second World War. As it turns out, the key to deciphering the infamous German Enigma code ended up being something rather innocuous. The idiosyncratic habits of distinct German telegraph operators, something Gladwell called a fist. It was so strong that allied codebreakers were able to identify patterns and the origins of specific Morse code messages that eventually led to breaking the code. I know what you're thinking. I thought I clicked on a playing cards deck review and you did just bear with me for a moment. The point of all this rambling other than to really recommend Malcolm Gladwell's excellent and thought provoking work is to illustrate how strong personal style can be. That somehow our idiosyncrasies are so strong that something as seemingly insignificant as how a radio operator taps out Morse code can betray the identity of the person responsible. After all, you can probably tell when you're watching my content just from a few frames of video, right? Here's where it finally applies to the deck we're reviewing today. Designer Giovanni Moroni has a style so particular to him that his work could never be confused for anyone else's. I could look at a court card illustrated by him and instantly identify the work as his. The deck we're reviewing today, the monolith deck, represents a beautiful example of the fist of Giovanni Moroni, if I can appropriate the term. If you're still here after that epic intro, congratulations to you and I guess to me. I'm The Gentleman Wake and you've landed on the go-to channel for playing card enthusiasts, maybe history enthusiasts as well. I hope the value you get from watching this video will compel you to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Let's take a look at this deck. These are the black and white monolith decks respectively released in 2019. These decks are a physical manifestation of Giovanni's own deep affection for mythology and lore and his influences. We'll get into those in more detail later. The two decks feature a lot of the same elements but also include some stark differences beyond just the superficial. The white monolith deck comes packaged in a silver metallic tuck case printed on a white glossy cardstock. The front of the box features an intricate arrangement of geographic shapes and architecturally inspired line work. All in all, it has a very diagram-like feel. The tucks feature no title or lettering on the front, or indeed anywhere on the tuck for that matter other than the traditional ad copy on the bottom of the boxes. The sides of the box feature some white bars with a ribbon-like coil design that reminds me of a snake or ivy but could also be an allusion to the columns of Greek or Roman antiquity. The same shape features prominently on the back of the tuck a representation of the back design within the box, a two-way design of mirrored circles flanking a central sun-shaped center design. Two diagonal lines forming 90 degree angles at either side of the circular sun center also give the impression of an all-seeing eye. The top of the box includes the four suit pips. There is no seal on the white monolith. The bottom announces the deck as being printed by the United States Playing Card Company, which we'll soon see is in contrast to the black monolith deck. Speaking of the black monolith deck, the main differences other than the coloration of course is that this deck serves as a more deluxe version of the two. The simple glossy tuck case gives way to a gorgeous black matte premium cardstock. The deck features black foil and silver holographic foil with nice embossing throughout. The line work in my opinion is much easier to appreciate than on the harder to see silver glossy tuck case of the white monolith edition. 
The holographic foil is especially nice on the back of the tuck which really shows off the rainbow spectrum effect well. There's also a numbered holographic seal on the black monolith edition. The bottom denotes this version of the deck as being printed by Carta Mundi. I'll explain why Giovanni went with the split production in a few. I actually really like the tuck cases for these generally, especially the black one of course, but I do wish there was a bit more branding on the front of the boxes. The design is nice, but the line work doesn't feel too prominent. Certainly not enough to upset the balance of the design had Gio added the deck's title as seen on previous examples of his work. It's a bit too subtle in this case. As far as the white monolith cards go, the back design is as advertised on the box, even down to the silver metallic ink, which is a Pantone color created using actual metals. The deck has a really nice shine and sheen to it, but without the presence of a dark color to offset the details, the artwork printed in white can get washed out in the light. The faces, also printed to be silver, fare much better with the inclusion of black and deep crimson red. This is a completely custom deck of cards, which means the spot cards include unique indices and pips, although the pip arrangement is standard. The pips are smaller than usual and include a thin white outline around each. The pips are also encased in a thick square white border that persists on all the cards except the aces, which not only revive the previously established ribbon element coiled around the frame, but have large, more detailed tailed pips living on top of the same linework design seen on the front of the box. The black monolith deck is really the star of the two. First of all, the back design seems to just work much better in black. Here the cards are accented with bright orange ink and feature gorgeous holographic silver applied through Cardamundi's proprietary cold foil process. The foil carries over to the front of the cards too. What was a white border in the previous edition here becomes a holographic one and the aces feature an entire background of cold foil. The inclusion of holographic cold foil is almost assuredly the reason Giovanni chose to go with Cardamundi to print the black edition, as the USPCC to date hasn't shown an ability to cost effectively produce cards like these. It's a really cool design choice that fits the deck's lore and theme very well. Giovanni's inspiration behind the decks was a combination of influences ranging from ancient mythology and the Bible's book of Genesis to the writings of Arthur C. Clarke, namely 2001 A Space Odyssey, which of course eventually led to Stanley Kubrick's seminal film of the same name. If you've seen that film, you know that there's a large black stone monolith at the outset that represents the dawn of modern man. The prehistoric apes discovered the knowledge to evolve represented by the monument. One of the other things that makes Giovanni's decks unique is the substantial amount of lore he injects into each one. I actually really respect his decision to infuse each deck he works on with its own story. Here, he imagines the creation of the universe, space, and galaxies, and the planets, and all the life within as the struggle of a pantheon of gods represented on the amazing court cards. The decks themselves are called monoliths after all, thereby they represent the documentation of that lore, a tome that details the history of the universe's creation and a base of knowledge. As such, the court cards are gorgeous and unique representations of these creators done in Giovanni's unmistakable style. Both the white and black editions not only include neon orange and green in slightly varying hues depending on the printer, but unique variations on each court card, which means that the black edition is not just a luxury version of the white. These are definitely two different decks. The figures on the courts are sometimes representations of actual mythological gods. The spades represent the gods of the void, including the god of space responsible for black holes, the goddess of absolute zero, and the god of eternity, otherwise known as death. The clubs are the gods of materia, the artisan god, and the goddess of liquid, and the god of atmosphere, better known as Saturn. The diamonds include the gods of energy, gravity, heat, and light, known in mythology as Helios. Finally, the gods of life are represented on the hearts, the god of flora, the goddess of fauna, and the god of intellect, also known as Prometheus, the god responsible for showing man how to make fire. These decks, like all the decks Giovanni creates, are chock full of details. So many details that I can honestly say it's a daunting task to review his decks, which is 
probably why I don't do it more often, despite the fact that his company, Third Way Industries, is very prolific, consistently producing great decks. Let's put it this way. It's very easy to admire his work and very hard to explain it. I hope I did a decent job here. Let me know in a comment below. I should mention that the white edition includes a double backer, although the deck isn't very well suited to magic. Included with both decks are two jokers, although the black edition variants are a bit flashier, of course. There are also a pair of nice alternate jokers or oracle cards as well. The black edition includes a silver foiled ad card instead of the double backer that reminds me of an astrological chart. As far as handling is concerned, the two decks are well representative of the amazing and divergent approaches of the two printing giants involved. Despite Cardamundi's recent buyout of the United States playing card company, the two deck manufacturers continue to make very different feeling cards. The USPCC printed white monolith edition handles as you'd expect. They are modern cut, printed on premium crush stock, and they fan, farrow, and flourish beautifully. The black monolith deck, which also handles amazingly, is printed by Cardamundi on their recently discontinued Superlux paper. And as such, this deck along with the recently printed parlor decks from yours truly will live on as some of the final examples of B9 True Linen finished decks printed on the relatively thick paper, although the texture of the embossing on the cards will live on in future Cardamundi decks. I should mention that the cold foil process does not hinder the deck's performance in any way. The monolith decks, including a third variant I didn't cover here, the red monolith, which features the same cards as the black deck but with holographic gilding, are still available via Giovanni's thirdwayindustries.com. Use promo code HIGHCLASS to get free shipping. Special thanks to Giovanni for sending me these decks to review for you. Congratulations to Isley Silver King of the North for winning the gorgeous silk playing cards set. Contact me via Instagram to claim your prize. To check out my review of another amazing deck by Giovanni Moroni, one that actually glows under black light, please check out the review that will appear right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I've been The Gentleman Wake. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.